What is up, everybody? Today we are talking all about warm showers. Warm showers. Do you know what that is? I'm gonna talk all about what it is, how it works, how to use it, tips for being a good host and a good guest, what I like, what I don't like. It's all coming up in this episode. Let's roll. Hey, welcome back. This is the Rad Bike Adventure if you are new here. And at this channel, we talk all about things bike touring, bike packing, basically anything bicycle and bike lifestyle related. And uh, if you're into that sort of thing, you should hit that subscribe button, join our community. We like to keep it fun and accessible here. Today's episode is going to be pretty thorough. I'm going through all of the warm showers information. So settle in, grab a drink. I've got um, my green tea sparkling beverage here with grapefruit and mint flavors. Tell me in the comments down below, what are you drinking today before we get started? So. Warm showers is basically a reciprocal, I've got some notes today too, because I got a lot to cover, is a reciprocal hosting community for traveling cyclists and hosts, uh, cycle tourists, if you will, and hosts of those traveling cyclists. So it's kind of like couch surfing, but for people on bikes, if you're familiar with couch surfing. Essentially, you are opening your home to strangers traveling on bicycles, um, or you are, you are one of those people traveling on bicycles and you're looking for places to stay. And it is reciprocal in the way that you don't have to pay anything. And usually the person hosts you, they give you dinner, sometimes breakfast. And um, usually these people are cyclists themselves. And then with the idea that later on you will be reciprocating and hosting yourself. So that's the basic idea. Oh my God, these chimes. Sorry, I had to deal with the chimes. I don't know if you could hear them before, but it's kind of some insane chiming going on. So you're using an online platform to view other people's profiles to see whether or not you want to stay with them, look at reviews, etc. The website is warmshowers.org. They are a nonprofit organization based in Boulder, Colorado, USA. It is also a community. So Warm Showers sends out a monthly email that has um, their blog linked in there. It's like stories from the road. They also have a podcast called Bike Life, which I'd recommend checking that out. Some travelers talking about their warm showers experience or their hosting experience. They also have a forum on their website, but it's not really very used. We're going to touch on this a little bit later. Um, and they have a Facebook group. They have a Facebook page, but they also have a private group that you have to get approved to join. That has 30,000 members in it. And that's for sharing stories of your trips on the road, etc. Again, I'm going to touch on that a little later. So those are kind of the basics of what uh, Warm Showers is. So how does Warm Showers work? Well, you have to be over 18 and traveling by bicycle. Or if you're a host, then you are a fan of people traveling by bicycles. But usually you've been a cycle tourist at some point in your life before that. It used to be free, but now there is a $30 one-time kind of lifetime fee that you have to pay in order to join. We're going to talk about that a little bit later too. Um, and if you cannot afford it, it says on their website that if you absolutely cannot pay this amount, then to reach out to them to get a discount. But then I'm going to show you a screenshot right now. Whoopsie, when you click on that, it takes you to a page that says we've had too many requests and they're not processing that anymore. So there's that. Um, I also believe that there's like a certification process where you have to like wait for them to approve your membership. So don't do this at the last minute because I think it does take like 48 hours or something for them to approve you and then you can make your profile and do all the things you need to do to get it going, which I'm going to show you this right now. I've got a screenshot, um, how to sign up and find a host. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to warmshowers.org, of course. And then you want to go to join, choose your language. And let's see, there's how it works. Become a host, get on your bike, blah, blah, blah. All this stuff, they got their socials down there. So join the ride, right? And then you're gonna see it has, oh, you wanna join our community. There's the one-time fee. And then you're gonna scroll down and there you go. You can put in, you can apply with your email address. And then I believe that's when they're going to, oh, you put your credit card, your information in. And then they're gonna send you the email and then you just go from there and you have to create a profile, which is pretty straightforward, right? Like it's just like filling out your information, make sure you get a photo in there, et cetera, et cetera. And then once you are, once you've been approved to find a host, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to search 
And when you go to search, the map is gonna pop up. And then on the map, you can just scroll around and wherever you need to go, obviously. And then you're gonna see that when you zoom in, like from the outside, it'll just have a number. And that means like in that area, there's seven, eight, four, three people, however many. And then when you zoom in, you can actually see the hosts and click on them. And sometimes the website's a little bit funky. There we go. And then you're gonna click on them and you get the information about this person that they have listed there. So the, the, some people have their address or their phone number. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to send a message to this person asking them if you can stay, right? Like give them their store. We're gonna to touch on this in a second with tips. And that's basically how it works. And when someone says yes, then you know that you have uh, a person to stay with and you're just gonna communicate with them through the Warm Showers app from then on out. Or sometimes what we'll do is, you know, ask for a phone number or a WhatsApp or Instagram, another way to communicate. I've, I've had messages not come through before. So a lot of times I like to just get the person's phone number and go from there. <laughs> All right, so we're back, we're back. Let's get into some tips for getting hosted because I've had a couple people say, oh, I've tried using warm showers, but people don't respond to me or like I've just never been able to find a host. So I've got five tips for you for getting hosted utilizing the warm showers network. Okay, let's go. So tip number one, make sure that your profile is filled out and has a photo, right? You wanna show your face, that is helpful because people wanna see who you are. There's also um, in the profile, you can add more photos and I would recommend that. It's kind of nice, right? You're, you're trying to get to know this person and you're trying to let them know who you are because they're about to allow a stranger into their home. And you can also link to your socials. If you have one, you know, Instagram, Facebook, again, you're just trying to get to know this person and you're trying to make a connection, right? You're trying to make a connection with this person. Tip number two, you want to contact someone who has their profile filled out, who they as well have a good profile picture and that they have a good response rate. So are they 10 out of 10 responses, 100%? Are they zero out of 10? You want someone with a good response rate that is definitely going to help you to get hosted uh, better because they're more likely to respond, obviously and that they've been active recently. It'll usually tell you when they've been active. So if it says like, hasn't been active in five years, probably don't waste your time messaging that person because they're probably not active on the site anymore. And make sure that you do read their profile, right? Like get a feel of who they are. And there is a reason for this because the next thing you're gonna do on tip number three is you want to send a personalized message to this person. Don't just spam 20 people in an area with the same message. That's not the point of warm showers. The point is not to just like get a free night to stay somewhere. The point is to make connections with people and have like a cu cultural exchange of kinds. And so you want to, you know, maybe mention something that you read about in their profile that interests you. This is the reason you want to stay with this person. And then also mention something a little bit personal about yourself. While we're getting personal, I guess I should take my glasses off, right? Okay, so we're getting personal and the sun has gone down. Um, but yeah, you want to you want to create a connection with this person. And the best way to do that is to mention something about them that you found interesting and also maybe something about yourself that could connect with this person. Also, when you reach out, things to include would be your intended time that you plan to stay there. Are you gonna stay one night, two nights, three nights would be pushing it. Um, mm. It's usually just one or two typically just one with a lot of cyclists, and then also state your dietary needs. Uh, those are important things that your host would like to know about. Okay, number four, my tip for getting hosted is contact the person if you're having any delays. So if you've reached out, you made the connection, the person said yes, and then you got delayed for a couple days and you're just not telling the person, the chances of them allowing you to stay with them are, they're going down, okay? I was surprise on our trip, we stayed with many warm showers hosts, a lot of them have had experiences where a cyclist will ask to be hosted and then just never respond again. And I just think that's quite rude. And sometimes the person had confirmed they were gonna come stay and then they just never showed up. I mean, whatever has happened to this person, like now the host is worried about them. So if you're gonna be delayed, and we all know like with cyclists, you have to be flexible, just communicate, right? Let the host know. And that's why it's great, I think, to just exchange a phone number or the WhatsApp so you can send a really quick message, make it really easy and tell them, oh yeah, you know, we're gonna be there in an hour or we're running late, we might be there after dark. So just make sure you communicate with your host. Um, and number five, tip number five would be that, you know, safety is always a concern for people when we're using these kind of networks. Um, I will say that we've had really, really great experiences with warm showers, but you should definitely 
read the reviews when you're looking for a host, see that they've had a positive or a few positive reviews and definitely look through their profile. And when you get their phone number, hopefully, um, you know, maybe reach out with a text or a phone call and just like use your intuition, right? Like get a vibe from this person to make sure that you feel safe going there. And on the Warm Showers website, it states something along these lines that to remember that you alone are responsible for your own well-being. So take responsibility, use your intuition, and you'll be on the right path to having a great Warm Showers experience. Okay, so now moving on. We've got tips for being hosted. Now we're gonna talk about five tips to being a good guest, because I think this is part of it too. This is all part of having a great warm showers experience all around. And number one, that is going to be to respect the home that you are in because these people have welcomed you in. You should respect their home and you should absolutely be grateful because uh, we've been hosts before and it does take energy and work to be a host because you're allowing the person into your home, you're pre um, prepping a room for them and then you're cleaning up the room after them, cleaning the sheets, you're cooking dinner. You know, you're, you're working. It's not just like this person just comes and goes. So definitely be grateful for your time there. Tip number two is to bring a little something to share. And some of our hosts, if you're watching this, they're gonna be like, did you guys bring things to share? Maybe we did a couple times. I know we're always running late, so I feel like we hardly ever had time to like stop and bring something. But you can always ask your host, oh, are you into wine? Or would you like some beers or some fruit or, you know, whatever. Totally not necessary, but it's like, it's a nice touch, I think. But cyclists understand, it's hard to carry stuff when you're on your bike, you're not just in a car, right? So. You don't have to do it, but it's nice. Um, number three, tip number three is to clean up after yourself. Absolutely clean up after yourself. Keep your space tidy. Try to keep your stuff in one area. Don't just be like spreading out all over the house. That is a no-no. Um, you can also offer to do the dishes or strip the sheets off your bed or use your own towel. Again, like totally not necessary. And again, it's gonna depend host to host, um, but just again, something nice to offer to, you know, make it a little easier on your host. Tip number four is if you are staying more than one night, then you should offer to cook a meal. Really nice gesture. And then it's kind of fun for you to get to cook in a kitchen. At least we always enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, offer to cook a meal. Okay, and tip number five, final tip here, Remember to take a photo together because you just had this really wonderful experience with your host and you're gonna wanna remember it. So take a photo. And if you wanna do something a little extra, you can always send them a postcard while you're on the road. I think that's a really nice touch. Again, it's pretty extra, but hey, it's nice. It's nice to keep the community, keep the community together. <laughs> okay. All right, we're getting there. Whew, take a break. Everybody take a sip from their drink. Tell me where you're watching from. Hit a thumbs up if you're enjoying this video. I'm getting hot. It's kind of hot in my house because I have all the windows and doors shut to keep it quiet because it's so windy. So this portion of the video, we're going to be talking about things that I like about warm showers and things that I do not like slash think could be improved. So let's start with things I like. Okay, see, so yeah, I've, got, I've got a list here. So things I like, it is an incredible community of cyclists all over the world. Like that is so freaking cool. We have stayed with people in Australia, Canada, China, Cambodia, the US, of course, all around Europe. Like, I mean, it's the world. So I think that is really, really incredible. Um, it's a cultural exchange, the amount of hospitality that we've experienced on the road, especially when you're away from home. It's nice to be in someone's home and feel like you're at home and be chatting with other like-minded cyclists and people that have traveled and you can share travel stories. Like, I mean, we just have some amazing, amazing memories from utilizing the Warm Showers Network. You can share adventures, get ideas for new ones, um, staying in touch with old hosts and guests. You can make lifelong friends. Um, obviously the ability to save while you travel and the ability to give back when you're at home and you can host and you kind of feel like you're a part of their adventure, which is super cool. It can turn a tough day into one of the best. That's happened to us a couple times, actually two very memorable times for me when I was like caught out in a storm and I basically got like rescued by a warm showers host. I should just shout out real quick, Andrew, my first ever warm showers host. This is a story for another time, but Andrew, I will always remember you and you <laughs> rescuing me on my second ever night cycle touring with energy bar in hand and you're ready to throw all my wet clothes in the washer and dryer. 
that I'll never forget that and us like pouring over the maps at night and we rode off the next day together like that is one of the best memories and it was literally my second day ever cycle touring and that is all because of warm showers but I'll show you that whole story another time those are the things I like let's talk about things I dislike alas there are some things that I dislike okay so number one not too fond of the name <laughs> and by not too fond I mean I don't like it now that I have said warm showers so many times it feels like it's a part of my vocabulary and it doesn't feel as weird but I still think they should rebrand because when you're trying to explain warm showers to other people inevitably their face goes from like excited about your trip to what they're like a little bit horrified and also confused and then you have to explain what it is and they're like oh, okay but like no, why warm showers no who, who wants a warm shower i want a hot shower i don't want a warm shower so to me the name you know it has a soft spot in my heart because we associate it with something so great but so many hosts that we stayed with like they would be like oh but this the name so warm showers i invite you to rebrand <laughs> it is okay to rebrand this is also the part where i'm gonna like give a little bit of advice unsolicited rad fam advice rebrand i've got a great name for you cycle stay cycle stay that that's it's it's perfect cs and it's like couch serving cs cycle stay um, you have the Bike Life podcast. It could be like Bike Life Cycle Stay because then you could actually sell swag to raise money because I would be absolutely stoked to buy a shirt that said Cycle Stay or a cap or socks, jersey, whatever. Um, but I am not really keen on getting something that says warm showers. So I think that they're missing out on opportunity to sell swag because of the name. Let me know what you think in the comments down below about the name change, please. I am very curious what you all think. Um, okay, things also things I don't like, um, that there's a paywall now. That kind of sucks. I get it, they have to make money because I'm sure there's like a lot of admin that I don't even know goes into warm showers, but $30 seems a little steep. I would love to see something like a sliding scale, like maybe you can choose anywhere from 10 to 30 or 10 to 50 and encourage those that are willing uh, to pay that they can, or just $10 minimum up to however much you want to give. I think 30 is a bit much. Like we're talking about the whole world here. A lot of people can't afford $30. And I think that that's just a big barrier. Another thing I don't like is that you have to pay to use the app. So <laughs> we've used the app quite a bit, and this is before you had to pay for it. And it was never great. And then they redid the app. And before we even got to see if this app was any good, they were like, and you're gonna have to pay for it. It's like, we don't even know if it's a good app. If it's just like the other app, then hell no, I don't want to pay for it. <laughs> I just don't get that. And you know how much this app costs? $17.99. $17.99. I was talking to my partner about this and she was, she's a medical provider and she's like, medical journal apps don't even cost that much money. Like that is a really expensive app annually. And I know that there's, um, you know, like Ride with GPS, those apps are quite expensive, but that's providing a lot of service. I think that that is a more complex service than what Warm Showers does, especially when I can just do everything on the browser. I don't have to use the app. So once again, that's my hack for you. You don't have to use the app on your phone. You can literally just go to the Warm Showers browser site and do all the same things there. So why would I utilize the app? There is a host mode that is free, but a lot of hosts are kind of annoyed that like you always see this like paywall. And again, it's not the greatest app. So like, I just don't really get it. Um, it's also, if you don't want to pay annually, it's $2.99 a month, which again, seems quite pricey. Rad advice. I would say just make the app $2.99, stop, full stop. And then you pay $2.99 to download it and just have it. I'd be willing to pay three to maybe five bucks to have the app forever. I think paying $2.99 a month is way too much, especially when you can use the browser. Um, the website is okay. They redid it. I know I'm just kind of nitpicking here, but honestly, like if you're gonna charge this much money, I just feel like things should work better. And sometimes it's a little bit fidgety and like links don't take you to places that they should. I, 
I don't know. I, I think that it, it could be improved. Like it looks nicer because they redid it like 10 years ago or something. Yeah, I think those are all the things that I don't really like. It's honestly not that much. I just think you should raise money with swag, with a better name, just rebrand, just just go for it, rebrand, you can take the risk. And uh, yeah, another thing I do like, I think that it's great that they're doing the podcast. I think it's great that they're sharing blog stuff. Um, oh, another thing that I think that could be an improvement is to utilize your Facebook group, which 30,000 members, that's a pretty good amount. I think that they should create that into a forum because the forum on their website really doesn't have a lot of action. Like I looked through a lot of the posts and they would have like one response, zero response, zero response, zero response, two responses, one response. But their Facebook group does have a lot of activity. And I know that in some groups you can have like tabs for different things. And I'm just like, why not open up warm showers to being a place where you could post about, you know, rides that you're interested in, trying to find a riding partner, um, things like that, like whatever, host notes. I don't know. There could be so many things hosted on that Facebook group where they already have a lot of activity. So I think that would be a really, really cool thing to add in. I don't know if they've ever considered that, but um, people do email us sometimes and ask like, oh, is there anywhere that I can find people to ride with? And I usually send them to Adventure Cycling Association because they do have a forum. But hey, if warm showers could get in that game or cycle stay, if cycle stay could get in that game, I'm just going to start calling them cycle stay. Um, I think that that would be a huge opportunity for them to grow their platform, grow awareness and get more people donating money, et cetera, et cetera. Oh yeah. And I, I would like to know where the donations are going because on the page, it does say like, oh, click here to see where the donations go. And it doesn't actually take you anywhere. Just like takes you to the FAQ page. So go. And one idea would be to um, for a donation is that you like sponsor someone's membership. So, you know, if they want to keep the membership, I, I, I get it. Like you need to make money for this, um, to keep going to be nonprofit. Cause it probably takes a lot to run it. Um, but then you could donate to pay for someone else's membership. So I think that could be a cool idea. That's it. Yeah. Sell more swag, even sell the, sell the, um, bike life website swag should have that on your website, you know, um, store. There should be the bike life or cycle stay store. Enjoy that video. I hope it wasn't uh, too much all at once, but I just wanted to cover all of the warm shower stuff. Oh, I also want to mention that um, Darren Alf from Bicycle Touring Pro made a video about how to be a good host. He gave his tips for being a good warm showers host. So I will link that video up here if you want to check that out. I thought that was a nice video that he made. And I definitely agreed with a lot of the sentiments, although I don't know if I'd give people my my bedroom. I think I'd make them sleep on the couch, Darren. <laughs> all right, everyone, that is all for today. If you liked that video, slam that thumbs up. You made it this far. Subscribe for more content and remember to rat on. Catch you in the next one. Bye. It's just better with the glasses, right? It's just better with the